So fear is the goddess of wisdom and her sword is a call to the hero's journey to become the hero of your own myth. She is a wahine toa, a courageous woman who is trying to distinguish true guidance from inherited social programming that no longer serves. Sometimes conflicting advice and tikanga and rules can feel like an impossible situation to navigate. Yet in this portrait, she embodies mana wahine, this divine feminine quality. There's composure and wisdom in her eyes. Her Victorian dress is heavy and stifling, yet it's also beautiful. And her moko kawai that she wears is an outward sign of an inner link to her roots. And her face is based on dozens of 19th and 20th century black and white photographs of Māori that I was looking at, and also of my own ancestors. So fear is the original feminine principle. So God is the source and the goddess is the emanation or the play of God. Sophia's story is like our own mortal tale. The symbols on Sophia's sword point to an inward alchemical journey of transformation. The curved koru designs, which symbolize growth and rebirth, move into these sharp triangular designs, which resemble the Egyptian hieroglyph for water. And water and oceans can be interpreted as these mysterious places of the deep and in our lives that can seem like chaos. So we've moved through chaos into this vehicle of light here, the uh, Merkaba or the Star of David, and ascending through the sword, becoming these dual caduceus serpents which wrap around the sword and symbolize the unification of opposites through light and dark. We continue to rise up, sort of like Kundalini energy rising up the spine. In tantric practices, the goal is for this energy to reach the pineal gland situated at the third eye and awaken your connection to all that is.